dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time and welcome back Last time on Missed Opportunities, the crew of Pixie's Fury ventured deeper into the derelict ship, the Emperor of the Waves, in search of a chest rumored to contain treasure of immense value. Upon descending into the bowels of the ship, they uncovered what seemed to be a completed ritual involving a circle, a uh, circle of blood, which formed arcane ruins across the floor and strange items indicating different lands and something else that, that didn't quite, uh, that were barely recognizable to the group. And in the center of this circle, seeming to be the target of whatever curse or foul magic was being conjured or a number of items representing salt marsh after defeating the caster of the ritual along with a sort of giant mutated lobster type of creature the crew descended down into the bilges where they discovered their target the lockbox containing the treasure upon sighting it a giant creature attacked the ship. Enormous tentacles pierced the hull on either side and started to pull the ship down. And as it filled with water, they were attacked by tentacles and undead creatures alike. But thanks to um, some quick thinking on the parts of the casters, some bravery from the tanks and uh, just cunning all around, they were able to survive this onslaught, bring the treasure up out of the ship, and get it out to a jolly boat which had been brought by one of their crew and were able to make it off the boat right before it was pulled down to the depths now my friends your the the um jolly boat is rocking heavily and there is still this bubbling of the remaining air that was left in the emperor of the sea just kind of uh, hissing up out of the water behind you. But thanks to two of your crew members who had rowed out to your rescue, you are able to get this heavy locked box onto the boat and get yourselves up. And a couple um, of these giant tentacles still just dance in the air for just a bit where the sea go or where the Emperor of the Waves used to be, and then slowly recede back down into the waters and as evening comes on on the open sea all is quiet for the moment well that was fun not sure i want to repeat that experience Please, please, no more of that for a while. Uh, I don't know if we can help it. Are there multiple definitions of fun? Because from what I've, I've learned about the word is that it means it was enjoyable, and I didn't find that enjoyable at all. 
Ah, I see you haven't yet heard much about tone. Uh, she she was being sar sarcastic, Serain. Uh, it's, it's when you say something that's the opposite of what you mean. But why would you do that? Um, because you're expecting other people to understand that you don't actually mean it, even though you're saying something that doesn't make sense. She just seems inefficient. It, it is, but it's one of those weird, like, traits that people have. Oh. And that's been written down for posterity. Wonderful. Thanks, Melvin. Um, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so. Oh, y'all are a sight for sore eyes, by the way. Crew members, thank you. Thank you. Blessings. Um, let's get back to the ship. <laughs> row, row, uh, row, one of them says to you, the that creature had a fearsome focus on whatever that wreck was there it didn't mm. we were about ready to turn away get some distance between her and the sea ghost but well seemed to care not about any of us thought she might need some help so here we are yes well for those of us who are a little less aquatically inclined very appreciated yeah thank you <laughs> well, I'm sure you do fine. It's not like you can't swim or anything like that, I'm sure. Oh, well. If, oh, if he jiffy, can't you know. swim. He no, can't swim? Can't. Oh, he just thinks like a rock. Yeah. yeah, that one. I had to save him once. You're pulling me leg now, right? No. Well, unfortunately, no one's no. touching your leg. You guys have had quite a day. I'll just... I'm going to ignore what I've just heard and let y'all keep talking amongst yourselves. Maintain that course. Touching his leg, she says to Melvin. <laughs> it's it's another expression. It's, it means that you're you're kidding or joking around. This is impractical. And so, with a little bit of the time, the crew is able to row you back all the way to the sea ghost which is waiting for you on the open waters well back to salt marsh then i think straight Hi. on home let's go and get paid you think so money now you re you it takes quite a bit of effort to haul up this um lockbox which is iron just with um, extremely sharp corners. It almost looks like a solid, um, I guess, rectangular prism of iron. Um, there are, you can see just barely the crease where the lid would lift up, but there are no visible hinges. There is no um, uh, mechanism that you can see at all to open it. If you weren't paying attention and uh, didn't know that this was kind of the item you were looking for, you would think this might actually just be a solid block of iron. But it is not quite that heavy uh, as a, a solid metal, and you can hear the contents maybe just sliding around just a bit inside as you lift it up. But you hoist it all the way up onto the ship, and they um, take some ropes and are able to sort of fasten the corners and stow it away on the main deck for you. Mm. And at your orders, a um, course is set back to Salt Marsh, probably about a day's sail. I, um, as, as the lockbox is being uh, put away, I think to myself a, uh, a silent prayer of thankfulness that there is nothing that is lockpickable and look over at Anaris and just make sure that she's doing okay. <laughs> um, I think Anaris is probably uh, leaning against one of the gunnels and just staring at that box intently. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nope. Um, 
DM once we're back on the ship safely and I'm sort of in the middle somewhere away from the edge. Um, I will sit down and pull my book back out and pull that little piece of paper wrapped around the the little um, stone that we found, the obsidian. Mm -hmm. Obsidian, yeah. Back out of my pack. Um, and I'll take a pearl out of my pocket and put it on my book and begin to cast Identify um, as a ritual, but not using the ritual speed. I can do that once per day. Um, so it's just going to take me a minute to cast instead of 10. Okay. Or 11, rather. Um, and I'll touch my finger to this little floating pearl that's just floating over my open book. Um, and then another finger to the item. And begin to identify. All right. So um, you all see Melvin touching this um, iron box, which is very... Uh, not very... the iron box, the obsidian piece oh, that we found. The one right. that had been like whispering to me or whatever when I tried to ritually identify it previously. Sure. Because um, I believe I touched it for about a minute previously and was able to pull my hand away still. <laughs> which is why I'm going to be using the regular casting time for identify this time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So as you um, hold on to it, that same sensation begins to spread through your mind. Um, like something is speaking to you from within your mind, almost like an earworm of a melody that you can't help but hear. Coming from the inside of your mind, this whispering, speaking, deep sound. Thankfully, this time as you're able to cast it much faster, you get the spell off and the item is not, um, it is, it is not something that you necessarily know how to use, but it is similar to um, similar to Ascending Stone, and you know that by um, being in contact with this or near a stone like this um, gives some type of creature the ability to telepathically um, communicate and even um, sort of meld consciousness with someone who is basically attuned to it. You would also know that um, by spending 10 minutes touching this or very with it very near you, um, it begins to, you begin to attune to it involuntarily. Well, that's not concerning at all. Um, I'm going to wrap it back up in that paper. Um, okay. And put it away again. S stop touching it. <laughs> uh, well, we probably don't want to spend too much time around this because it attunes itself to you if you have it around you for too long. By touching or proximity? Uh, unclear DM. Is it? Do I have to be in physical contact with it, or is it just having it on my person? Uh, as far as you know, to actually complete the attunement, it would have to be, you would have to maintain physical contact. Okay. Yeah, well, you, have to, you have to be touching it. Would you like me to stow that away? Um, it might be a good idea. It's kind okay. of like a sending stone, but a little bit different. Yeah, well, I got that sense from the whole involuntary attunement thing. Yeah. I'll take it if you want, and I'll just put it in the bag of holding. Okay. Joke! I'd now like to ritually identify the box, so I'll spend 11 more minutes <laughs> with the box. Hi, Mom. Because <laughs> I'm curious what it does. Hi, Mom. Okay. Um... The Can box. I short rest? What's that? Can I sort of just rest, short rest? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, there is much time, and as he's, as uh, Melvin is going over all of these, uh, certainly there is um, uh, the ability to uh, take some time. So, yeah, the, this box, um, as you identify it, um, 
for some reason, as you finish identifying, you know that it is simple, but immensely powerful. Um, a command word um, is required to open it. Um, and it, uh, the command word itself, you think, all right, I've got this as part of the identify spell. You feel like you learn it. And as you sort of go to write it down or consider it, you can't remember it. It suddenly is like, almost like a dream where you wake up and the memory of it is there. But as you go to describe it, suddenly maybe the emotion, maybe how you felt about that word still remains, but it's just gone from your mind. You know that this is very powerful magic that probably took a immensely powerful mage to uh, conjure. Uh, well, I don't think it's going to be possible for us to open this before we get back. Um, even with my identification, I, I can't get it to open. Um, I learned the command I, word, but immediately forgot it again. I didn't think we were opening it anyway. I thought that was yeah, the we're agreement. not opening that shit. No, I, I didn't think that was the plan. I'm just letting you know that it wouldn't be possible even if we wanted to. Oh, okay. Interesting. Welcome, jail! Jail! Hey! What? Good to see you. Shail. Um, <laughs> it is, uh, you are on deck with the rest of the crew as Melvin has sort of identified this box and then this dark um, sort of obsidian shard that he has found. The box, you say? There's no lock or anything on it. Magic box. Yep. Hmm. Can I investigate this box since I am late to the party? There is no discernible opening mechanism. No discernible opening mechanism to you. Hmm. You yeah, I was like, maybe she just hasn't discerned it. <laughs> well. <laughs> Nay wants in that box. Do we think that this is the box? Yes. It does. Um, it has not many markings, but it does have a... Um, the top of the lid is sort of discolored into the prime water seal. Very recognizable as his property. Are you going to roll an investigation check? Chael, is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Inaris, I should say. I was about to say, who is Chael? God. I think it's pronounced Chow. Chow. <laughs> Chow. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. With an S-H. Oh, you yes. My mistake. Chow. <laughs> Chow. It would probably help if I was in roll 20. It's kind of now. I'm not alone when I, I say that. I saw a four in D and D Beyond. Need it to transfer over. <laughs> okay, that looked good. Well, she might have not have seen this one. What is your investigation score, by the way, um, in Eris? That is a big fat zero. So a plus zero. You know, it would be really easy as if you took one of your crack and dice and rolled that. You don't even have to do any math. Well, I clicked a roll, so I know something rolled. I just don't know where it went. We're going to pretend that David in, uh, didn't see it. It rolled in. Um... That's fair. Okay. Roll your crack and dice, Anaris. It didn't roll anywhere. I didn't see it. Let's hear that. Let's hear that click clack of the dice rolling. Is it like this one? Click clack rock. That's uh That sounds dangerous. That's a clunk clank, not a click clack. That's because I have to open up my dice tray. Can't mess up these cracking dice. Oh my god. What, where have you been? Work or something? Yes. <laughs> I just got home. It's been hell. That's a No, nine. that's on Mondays. A 9 you say. That's a 9. That's beautiful. Unfortunately, you're not able to learn anything new, but uh from what you had just been told. The 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 break from the um, main part of the box to the uh, lid is 
very, very minuscule. Um, it's almost imperceptible. You can just barely feel it by running your hand along that ridge, that edge. There are no obvious hinges. There is no uh, keyhole. There is no latch or anything like that that you can see. Ah, so what great secrets have you discerned here, Anaris, that my <laughs> shitty eyes couldn't see? <laughs> um, a lot more gold if he wants this damn thing back. I... I think we're getting enough. Are not really in the business of changing the terms of the agreement once made? That's, that's more for assholes and just really evil people. And I mean, I'm really to not the, either of those things. According to Posted. everyone else, she just gestures to herself, I'm evil. Does nobody else care about Nether's Bridge? Her home? We have a bargaining chip. I'm... I don't know how to better explain this, that... You gotta pick your battles. And that bridge is something that he's not gonna let go of. Not, like, I don't know how much he paid for it. It's probably more money than, well, I don't know how much money Saran has seen in her lifetime, but I don't know. Maybe comparable, maybe more. Who a knows? A lot, I've, I've seen a lot. I, I really did figure. We have um, enormous coffers, coffers, mm. and coffers that fill the coffers underneath the seat, so. <laughs> oh, how much, how much larger are your copper pieces than ours? A lot bigger. Okay. Everything's bigger in Triton land. <laughs> Clearly we're in the wrong place. Triton cities um, are actually just Texas. That's <laughs> <laughs> a Texan, um, yes. <laughs> Galen Primewater is not the kind of guy that you want to fuck around with, Anaris. All right? Like, we do this job, we get a nice chunk of money that'll help set us up in town, be able to do some more good, and we can work towards the bridge. But Nether's not entirely without a home. She has people who care about her. She also literally can't fit in it right now, so it's kind of a moot point. What do you mean she can't fit in it? Have we? I haven't seen her yet, have I? Has Anera seen her? Because she's been invisible. Yeah, you would have seen her now. She revealed herself last week. Yeah, she so. came out. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. wait, no, that was the yeah. I did. I didn't. She could still fit partially under it. I'll pick up the the box and I'll just shake it really hard. Does it sound? Oh, like it's it's um. It's it's like a chest. It's it. I want to say I pick up. Rion could barely carry it. He could only walk about. His speed was reduced to about ten feet when he was trying to carry it by himself. So. Um, okay, fine. She's just going to like a mature adult kick it as hard as she can, and then that's a walk. broken toe. <laughs> make a go ahead and make an attack roll, Anaris. You wearing steel toe An boots? unarmed roll, unarmed strike roll. That's gonna hey, hey, guys. While you're hey, doing that, 42. thank wow, you very much to Fabled 42. Welcome, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fabled 42. We thank you for the raid. Doing, uh, we're currently doing a giveaway, here. so please feel free to enter. Is the Leviathan in the box? What, this thing? Yes. <laughs> it's got 10 of these in that box, which is why if you kick it, please do kick it. <laughs> but we are doing a giveaway, uh, guys. Exclamation mark giveaway will give you uh, a ticket. We're giving away some dice. Some Kraken dice. 17? Uh, yes. All right. You, please roll a d6. Yes. It's my baby. How much damage do you do to yourself? Having kicked something made of iron before, I really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Four. I'll leave it to you to describe how Anaris reacts to this, but you take four points of bludgeoning damage as yeah. the chest does not move and your toe comes in um, direct contact with the side of this solid iron object. Badly. Unless you can speak drow, none of you know what she's saying as she hops up and down and just we can guess. holding her foot and... <laughs> All right, now, Saran, um, remember we were talking about tone, 
right? So we don't know what she's saying, but we <laughs> know approximately what she means by the way that she's saying it. They're twitch banning words. <laughs> she <laughs> looks upset. Yeah. A couple of the um a couple of the sailors are all just kind of staring at her doing this and hearing there's a you know, even though you don't understand it, there's sort of a darkness and a harshness to the drow language that really just draws an ear and a bunch of them kind of look over. You see a, a few of them spitting off the side of the ship, a few of them um, making small religious gestures or tying a bit of knotted rope in, in their hands as little uh, um, compulsions to ward off any sort of bad luck as they're staring at her. And, then you hear a dwarf trying to whisper, but whisp a, a loud whisper as in as only a dwarf could, saying, "That must be the drow half." <laughs> <laughs> if I recognize that as dragon, she'll <laughs> calm down slightly and just sort of limp off to a corner, cussing the whole way. She stubbed her drow foot. <laughs> you hear that someone else whisper. What do you think it would sound like if she stubbed her other foot? The non drow one. Anyway, and that conversation goes on amongst the crew a little bit as you guys head on back to Salt Marsh. And we can fast forward ahead to that. Um, it is a, a. The rest of the evening passes and there is night able to navigate by the stars and eventually you do see the beautiful soft glow of salt marsh in the distance um, as it becomes uh, and then as you're approaching the glow of the sun rises above the city you have arrived just in early morning enough time for all of you to have taken a long rest after that um, harrowing combat a long and rest, to the, you say. Um, come back in the city. Yeah. What's mm. that? Brian? A long rest, you say. A long rest, yeah. indeed. I you like long rests. rests. We get the benefits of our level up at that long rest. Yes, you are all now fully level five. Level six. Yay. Oh, five. Level fully five. Oh, Welcome back, Sean. Great. Thank you, everybody. I do apologize. It's all right. Old laptop. Hmm. <laughs> it angry. Yeah, not happy with me. Um, as we're pulling in, um, Nether comes out of her reverie. Something about the, um, the, the magic that was used to heal her, it, it, it freaks her out. Um, she's been very quiet and hidden away, but she does come up next to your Naris. I want to thank you. Moriah is probably right. This is not a battle we want to fight, but I appreciate the sentiment. She leans in very closely, says, I think I might have bigger plans than just a bridge. I think that might, uh, might require aid. Maybe. It's been a a bit of a crazy week. I'm, I'm still a bit off balance. But um, I, I'll let you know. But, but don't, don't needlessly antagonize Prime Water. When the time is right, we'll have all the leverage we need. I think I can, uh, make myself available to help you. I will uh, make sure to pencil you in. <laughs> Though not antagonizing the bastard will uh, severely limit my fun, but I think I can manage. Well, have as much fun as you want. <laughs> Just leave me out of it for now. So Pixie's Fury is coming into port now. You are ships passing in the morning with many of the fishing vessels of the families. Uh, a lot of these are just beginning to head out to begin their um, 
their catch for the day. As you make port, your crew, by this time, well-trained, well-coordinated, casts off lines, hauls the ship into the um, Solmore docks? Or where are you, uh, where are you docking? The same place. Okay. The uh, Solmore docks, then. No, uh, there didn't is we dock in the docks of the late, last time it was the, the, uh, the Olin. woman's, uh, Olin, the yeah. first time, but then when we came back after Lizard, Ventures. We did Didn't Soulmore. we dog at Soulmore? Yeah. Soulmore. Right. Yeah. I believe okay. so. Yeah. Yeah, because I handbraked yeah. it into the dock. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. It was, it was excellent, excellent work done there. Multi uh, and so the, the ship is tied off. Um, some of the, the uh, sailors go, and one of them uh, sort of turns around and looks to all of you and says, Who's the quartermaster then? Uh, that that'll be me for now. Right. Um, budget? Would you like stores for a week, a month? Uh, what? How how do we? Uh, how do you want her stocked? Um, I will think back to the um, the book that I have that is about nautical things that I'm trying to look up the name of because I have it written down somewhere. Um, one second. I have the Naval Almanac. Um, and I will consult my my notes from that to determine what would be the best course of action for that okay. because I as a player do not know. <laughs> well, no. I imagine that Gallen Prime Water will have some other activity for us, but maybe we can get a leg up on him. Wasn't there something about the Thalassic League? Well, yes, there was. Might we just investigate that ourselves? Well, so there's the Thalassic League, and then there's the um, other locations that were marked on the map. Um, Port Alusine, um, that place north of Baldur's Gate. Um, those are... Well, at least the port is going to be a bit of a journey. Well, that seems to be what's under discussion. Um, DM, how much would be appropriate to spend for a week's worth of supplies? Um, thinking of outfitting the ship, think about it as, uh, um, f and based on your crew and your own needs, um, for the meager rations and just not meager, but just to get by normal, um, it would think of it as about two gold per day. Okay. Um, M Mariah, uh, we currently have um, a fairly decent coffers, I think, for, mm -hmm. this, for this. Um, do you think that it would be good to outfit the ship for a week or two? Um, sounds fine to me. Yeah. Is there anything yeah. lost or gained by doing a larger time or a shorter time? Uh, He's basically just asking, where's the quartermaster? He's apparently been assigned the task of... Um, I mean, it costs what it costs. We don't going... get a discount for, like, you know, doing a month, then everything costs a little less per day. No, no, he's just like, well, how many... Like, all right, you guys are going off to do your thing, so how would you like me to refill the stores, basically? How Let's... long would it take to, like, the furthest away of these locations of the that the, had the connection to the Thalassic League? What's the, what's the furthest away? Um. Well, the I'm furthest the would. Or the two. Yeah, yeah, definitely Moonshe is mm -hmm. very far, far, really far. Yeah. yeah. And that's probably a month's voyage one way, huh. maybe. That's comical. Um, what? No, just that's really far away. <laughs> yeah. 
It depends on the winds, and it depends. The Moonshe Isles are weird, too. Mm -hmm. There's one of those places that getting mm -hmm. to them is just like, we should have been there by now. But yeah. uh, you just gotta... It's a bit of a clusterfuck. Yeah. I just sort of am anticipating that that might be of interest. Uh, so, uh, but... Well, why, don't, uh, it... why don't we get 30 days worth of supplies, then? Right. That will that will cover at least our next trip, if not our next two, and give us that, a little bit of leeway. We could get to and from Baldur's Gate with that. We could go one way to Moonshe Isle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll let's, we'll say thirty days worth of supplies. Okay. Uh, the sailor will um, then ask for the money, assuming you give it to him. He says he'll go and make the arrangements. Yeah, sixty gold. Um, I don't think we have that in the party treasure but um uh, wait how much gold i missed that 60 60 two gold um, per day. we would need to break one of our um 100 gold uh, ingots yes 100 gold ingots so does he um, does he offer here. change make change <laughs> <laughs> uh, melvin melvin will front the 60 gold for that so that okay. he's not dealing with an ingot That's <sighs> on the other hand you now have a crew to just do things for you um you could probably send someone to, um, especially to the mining company and some of these trading posts, would certainly probably trade your ingots for coin. Um, uh, there's some wisdom to that. Yeah. Yeah. That might be a good idea. Can we get Dragon on that? <laughs> Dargan will do that, yes. <laughs> dragon. Um, Only if you call him by his right name, but dragon? you will. Okay. Um... Should we, should we should we trade all of them in, or can I make an insight check on on Dargan, uh, make sure he's on the up and up and isn't gonna drink it, change us, drink it? Sure, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna roll one of my new Kraken dice. Insight. Well, I have a nine total. Up and up. All right, seems seems trustworthy to me. Um, how many ingots do we want him to? Um, is there anything yeah. to be gained by having an ingot as opposed to coin? You can use it as a bludgeoning weapon. You put in a enough, pinch. Coin, enough coins in a bag. <laughs> I say we cash them in. All That's going to be the most of the most value overall for. Right. Yeah. Are we sending the dwarf with all of our money, guys? That's probably That's not a, a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In Let's take it later. At a time or two at a time at most. Yeah. You have a lot well, of crew members too. They can, you could send, you know, the company of dwarves and other people. Uh, you have you have a retinue now to order around. Okay. And they're not going to screw us over. Like you're not you're not baiting us into losing Melvin all of our cash. Melvin doesn't think so. Melvin no, doesn't think so. They seem, they seem trustworthy to me. I want to know what I think. Hold on. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Sure. Oh, and natural twenty on the Kraken. <laughs> and while while uh, Mariah is scrutinizing him, a uh, little uh, sprite friend is going to come and just sort of alight next to him and touch him. Use heart okay. sense. Um, the uh, DC is now fifteen. DC 15. Okay. Um, well, that's easy because I know he is a commoner, so he will, uh, you know, gets no bonus to this. Um, I rolled a nine on the Kraken die. So you, uh, do you, you know his alignment? I know his alignment. And just a second while I uh, bring up Sprite again, everything got lost when I did the thing. I think that's all. I know his what generally his general state of mind and yeah then his alignment. Um, interestingly enough, as he's looking at these ingots and stuff, you get this. Your your, your sprite is says so he looks at it like he wants to eat it, but that's something like he's almost salivating over the look of this gold um, and just really enjoys holding on to the precious metal in a way that only a dwarf would just. Um, look at it with that sort of uh, strange synesthesia for something so valuable, so shiny, and so uh, precious so having been pulled from the earth. So, But you know his alignment to be lawful neutral, and um, he seems to be 
pretty straightforward. He just is enjoying handling this for now and knowing right. that the um, any gain that you all make is also money in his pocket. So, well, that's what Nether knows. And now, what does Mariah know with her natural twenty? Do I know entirely different information? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know his alignment per se, but you do think with a what's the bonus on that? I didn't hear oh, your right. modifier. Uh, it's not just a natural twenty; it's a uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. Well, um, with a with a twenty-three, the same thing. He okay. is um, really eager to hold all of these, and he kind of they're heavy so he passes a couple more of them off to one of his friends but when he looks at you um there's sort of this look in his twinkle in his eye like he's gonna enjoy holding on to this gold for a bit but the twinkle in his eye has this camaraderie to it like okay. yeah we're in this together look at this look at this these great riches i can't wait to make more of them yeah. um that makes you think that he feels like sees you truly as the captain and thinks he's part of the team so he's excited to to help out got it all right well i'm happy to deputize them him them. yeah all right so dargan and six other dwarves go off with to the um to some of the mines some of the uh merchants houses to go convert these into solid cash delightful so i so i shouldn't pay up front then and we should just pay out of that that's what i'm hearing well, we can pay you back. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, we'll so Melvin, 60 gold. Mark off yep. 60 gold from your sheets. Yep. Speaking of things that are incredibly solid, um, I think we should deliver this box. All right. And not have, give, give Gellin Prime Water reason to be up our butts about anything. It seems like a good idea. Also, we'll have a bunch of more money then. And we can pay the crew. I really wish we could figure out what was inside. I mean, he, he kind of, I feel like I remember him sort of suggesting that it was like deeds and other things, um, papers, work. likely that, I mean, I'm thinking about the goddamn bridge again, but like, you know, paper that indicates that he owns something. But then why wouldn't he want valuable? us to open it? If I were a businessman and I had a bunch of things that I thought were really valuable, I, I don't know. I might not want adventurers that I've met a handful of times and who have kind of semi gone out of their way to screw me over to take a look at my shit. Fair enough. And at any rate, it doesn't seem like there's any way to get in anyway. Hmm. Like, I don't like the bastard, but I don't begrudge him for not really trusting us either. So... Okay. To prime water. <laughs> Very good. So, um, having I suppose Prion, are you Prion and Sarayan are probably uh, teaming up to haul this chest once again. Um, it's an awkward thing because for one person to carry it, they're taking slow, lumbering steps. But for two of you to carry it, there's no handle either. So you're doing that sort of awkward Besides moving stepping. a refrigerator dance down the street. Like, no, you got this. Oh no, no, no! I got, I got, I got this corner. Oh, as you're trying to keep moving, uh, it is not pivot, pivot, oh my God. <laughs> pivot. <laughs> Amazing, yeah. Uh, all of that. It's so much easier with Melvin's disc. I could do that, you know. Don't, don't waste it. The rain immediately drops her part of the uh, uh, the box. Okay. Mel Melvin uh -oh. will sit down in the middle of the street, pull his book out, and spend eleven minutes casting Tensor's floating disc. <laughs> I need so the drink stupid. so bad <laughs> to have a have an open uh, you know book what? rise up out of the ground and pick it up. While he's doing that, I go get a shot and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> While he's doing that, um, Dal uh, flies around. I've never known there to be a jeweler shop or anything like that in Saltmarsh. Haven't had need of it, but I kind of do now. So, is there such a thing? Jeweler's shop. A place that I can get something gilded. Oh. There are enough, um... There are a couple sort of independent trading companies. Think East India t Company type 
uh, establishments where you think you could find something like that, certainly. Especially with the dwarves here now and the influx of silver from the mine. Um, a lot of that is going straight back to um, Gontelgrim. I can't believe I remembered the name of that, but um, good for some you. of the some of the goods are also staying here and being uh, made by the um, the the other dwarves into finery here in Salt Marsh. Good. But just a just a little. Salt Marsh doesn't need that much of that stuff. So, uh, what is it that you were looking for? Oh, I'll take care of it later. <clears throat> Just okay. wanted to know if there was such a place around. But now that I do, that's good. Yeah. Uh, oddly enough. There, you know, you draw a little bit of attention as Melvin just sits down in the street and starts to summon a gigantic book. I think is what your tensor's floating disc is yes. like. Yes, it's like a, a gigantic book. book that is just sitting there, uh, starting to take form. Uh, some the people book, are watching. The book. The book. A couple um, kids, it seems like on a dare, run up and sort of try and like one is wondering whether or not is it actually a solid object, but as the spell is still taking form, it's not quite there yet. And so they pass their hand through it and say, see, I told you, I told you it was fake. And they run away uh, down the street. And there's and then there's one child left that um, maybe about five years old wearing kind of um, this little, what looks to be a child's version of a sailor coat and a um, silk shirt. He's kind of buttoned up with some frizzy, um, blonde curly hair and he's just kind of staring at you guys with uh, his mouth hanging open and especially at Sarayan just staring at her armor and her coral form and, and he just stares at you for a little bit before kind of realizing that you've noticed him and it's everyone's eyes turn to him you go, <gasps> he kind of gets nervous and just darts away um, down a little alleyway Finally, the spell takes hold, and you can put the box on the tensor's floating disc. Melvin. Uh-huh? Did you see that small, small human staring at me? Oh, no, I was, I was focused on casting the spell. Hm. Sorry. Was there a kid around? There were, there were kids around, but one was staring at me like, I mean, it was just, I don't know. I don't know. You make Unsettling. an impression. You make an impression, Sarian. When you look different, people stare uh, at you. <laughs> very, you're very colorful, to be fair. Oh. I guess that's true. It's too bad that they left. They could have gone for a ride if they wanted. The magic tensor's ride. Uh, Nether moves as if to get on the way she did when she was a child. And then she stops. And... How how heavy is the strong box? Do we know from identify what I know specifically? Um, exactly thirty six inches long. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, I don't I don't have an exact weight, but it's very heavy. I think in the lines of in the hundreds of pounds. Okay, because the disc can hold up to 500. So I'm just trying okay, to do a it's less than 500. Don't think it's 500 pounds. <laughs> you no, but I was know. trying to do mental math as to whether Nether could get up on the disc as well. Dead closer break. to think closer to 300 pounds. So probably Nether could. I would assume. If you want to ride Nether, you still can. No, uh, that's that's something Nether would have done. Oh, right, Debris. 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 I'll, I'll get it right eventually. Sorry. Yeah. Just keep reminding me. He writes down in his book. Come on, Debra. Come to walk with me. Uh, Sarayan rushes over to Melvin. Did did she say Deb Debri is what we call her now? De Debri, yeah. Debri. Okay. And you guys with that are able to move much quicker up to the Prime Water Manor, which when you approach, the doors are thrown open. Um, assuming you will let them, a, a quartet of stronger um, servants come out to, um, more uh, more fully built servants come out to take the chest. Um, I love Falstaff and the, and the <laughs> basket of 
dirty laundry. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you hear from, from echoing from inside the um, inside the <laughs> iron. A fogo. <laughs> anyway, um, what are their names? Something something Sue. I have no Whatever. idea. Whatever. Uh, so they will take the <clears throat> chest from you um, and bring it into the study where you will be all swept into the um, study room where Gellin Primewater sits behind a desk, his form sharp, imperious as ever, but seems to be a little hunched over the desk and his, he's looking through a couple papers and he looks up and you see dark, dark circles around his eyes. It looks like he hasn't slept in um, at least a day and he kind of collects himself then and waves for you to come forward as the servants set the chest next to him. So congratulations. You've, um, you've managed to do it. Yes, indeed. Not without complication, but, you know, it's here. We're all here. Other things aren't. Yippee! He places his hand upon the box and speaks a strange series of syllables, and you hear a sort of easy, um, Oh, metallic but not grinding metallic sliding sound as just kind of by itself the lid of the box slides all the way over defying gravity for a moment as it just slides completely off the top of the box and then <laughs> falls to the ground inside perfectly um in, in perfectly fine condition are a number of other wooden boxes um some leather folios loose stacks of paper um, what seem to be sealed envelopes and such, and he goes and looks through a few of them, settling at, um, now upon one rolled piece of paper that seems to be a long list. He takes it and shuffles um, some of the um, papers away from his desk and, this, and starts to unroll this scroll upon the surface of his desk, and he looks at it and he go. He's yawns heavily and uh, pinches the bridge of his nose again. Then opens one of his desk drawers, takes out a pair of spectacles, and puts them on. Let me just, as promised, uh, assess the value of this briefly. It won't be. Uh, um. It won't be a moment, excuse me. Uh, and you see him take a, a drink from a cup nearby that um, you smell intensely strong tea, like someone made uh, uh, like a strong black tea with three tea bags in it, um, just doing anything they can to um, help stay awake. And he takes a drink of that and then spreads the... Um, manuscript out or the scroll out again and begins totaling and making some small notes to the side you what did you um did you in, uh, encounter anything strange out there exceedingly so well do tell Oh, let's see. Um, strange tentacly monsters that were worshiping black stone. Um, a priest with an octopus around his head. Um, strange rituals. And then the entire ship got pulled down by a giant octopus. Um, there was also a large crustacean. Correct. That sounds... He's kind of keeping this running total going. Listening as he... Um, smooths out again the rolled out scroll and goes through it um, totaling and nodding his head um, the ritual was rather interesting sounds... as well yeah sea devil things yes a uh, little different um kind of curious um in 
during your long, I think, tenure um, as councilman. Um, has the council made any uh, deals with seafaring creatures? We do it every day. What? No, I, I don't mean like Care people to be on more boats. Specific. I mean like the sorts of people who might summon really, really large sea creatures from the depths to eat your boat kind of thing. Like the sea princes from Luxon? I still don't know what you're talking about. I don't think that they... Well, I'm sure some of them may have that power, but... Okay. Nothing I've heard of is just what... what... <sighs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't understand. The, the Lassic League ring a bell. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, I know. Me. Okay. I no, no no okay 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 okay. I know you think that that shit's crazy, and as of or up until yesterday, totally would have been on the same page with you. But we saw some shit. Okay. So you say. Yeah. Okay, great. Council hasn't done anything like that? Great, thanks. Are, are you doing okay? You don't seem well. Um, it's been a long day. Well, a long night, but hopefully having this home will help me rest. Ah, damn it. And he kind of swears under his breath as he breaks a bit of the, the end of the quill off and goes for another um it opens the, the desk drawer goes for another feather pen pen dips it in his ink quill and then the scroll kind of lets go of the edge of the table and <laughs> rolls up again and you can see his patience with just consciousness is wearing thin um he takes another drink of his tea and then rolls out the scroll again reaches down into a lower drawer of the desk and takes out a paperweight and puts it and kind of positions it at the top so it will hold down the top of the scroll um there is a it's got a beautiful sort of silver base and then rising from the top is a solid chunk of black obsidian you're gonna say that that okay. makes the up the paperweight and he kind of pinches the bridge of his nose again and good and finishes the total um very good. As I thought, they have appreciated appropriately. 10,000 gold is yours as a reward, as promised. Sorry, how much? 10,000. 10,000. 10% 10, 10 of what you've just brought me. Yeah. Remember, y'all, we owe, we owe the crew. They're 10, so we're, we're taking mm -hmm. home 9, but... That ain't shabby. Um, wonderful. Um, do you keep that sort of cash on hand, or do we have to go somewhere to pick it up? What's what are you thinking? I had thought that this. Well, let's just say I had faith in you. We'll have the coin prepared when you leave. Okay. So and he um rolls up the the uh, sort of manifest of the paper items that he has right now back into the scroll takes this paperweight and tucks it back down under his desk replaces the um, list back in the box and closes it um, oddly enough for him sliding this heavy metal uh, lid back into place seems easy as shuffling cardboard um, as he's putting the paper weight, weight away, I'm just kind of casually nod towards it. Nice piece. Mm. Local make or something you got abroad? Ah. Uh, it's... And he kind of brings it back out, and he puts it on the center of his desk and kind of keeps uh, both of his fingers around the base and stares at the black stone for a bit. Ah. Uh, my father's and I think my grandfather's before that uh, 
I always remember seeing it at the edge of the desk. And I always wanted to take it as a kid for some reason, but no one stole from my father. No one steals from me either. But now it's mine. It's a fascinating little piece. The darkness of the stone is almost abyssal. Um, sorry, is there something else you needed? No, I was just curious. Then please see yourself out. I, I must see to this and try to get some rest. And he I takes the paperweight and places it back in the drawer and closes it. While Mariah's having that conversation, Melvin takes his spectacles off and pulls out a small piece of paper and wraps it around it, um, casting as an action detect magic and puts his spectacles back on. And look at the paperweight. Okay, are you able to do it subtly, or is it just an obvious casting of a spell? Um, it looks like I am taking my glasses off and wrapping them in a transparent film and then putting them back on. Okay. Um, with with the spell casting, though, there is there are spell casting mm -hmm. features, like subtle spell sure. that would... Yeah, so it's, that's very component. cool, but he yes. will um, look up is almost startled for a would moment. It, would it be possible for Nether to know that this was what's going on? Um, yeah, I mean, everyone recognize, even though it, it this is this is how it looks, it is recognizable yes. as Melvin working magic so upon as, these glasses. As so. Melvin is, begins to do, when he begins to do his thing, is there something on the edge of a table? Just anything that could potentially... Oh, uh, yeah, he's got papers. I mean, it's a full desk. There's like a, you know, some probably uh, ridiculous unused globe that is there for some reason, um, even though... Put a knife into. Even though Faerun isn't round, it's a globe anyway that just... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. So uh, Do Doll, will, <laughs> Doll will knock over, uh, knock some papers off the table as if like an uh, errant breeze has come through. We'll okay. Try and distract him from the fact that a spell is being cast. Okay. Um, tell you what. Um, it will... Um, so that, that would be the help action, I suppose, or something like that. Sure. Like a stealth yeah, check, Yeah, do you want maybe? me to make a stealth check for that or something? Slight uh, hands. Yeah. Sure. Let's do that at a, um, at a straight roll. Um, it is help, but it is obvious... Yep. To because you will still need to encant yes. as the verbal oh. component of the spell. So all of this is going to be difficult to hide, but um, we'll do a straight deception roll, Melvin. I've rolled a or, six on stealth. my die, plus three is nine. Woof. Ouch. Okay. Um, so tired, uh, so it's a disadvantage. Mm, <laughs> perception. He is very tired, but he is also the very keen and perceptive, and you are also standing right in front of his desk. I am standing he, right in front of him, yes. Um, kind of uh, steps, or pushes him, or he sits back higher in the chair for a bit, looking a bit concerned, and you hear then the um, um, sounds of armored footsteps, almost coming out of the shadows from behind some tapestries are to uh, very well armored guards who just sort of make their presence known. Oh, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. This is just a little, a small enchantment on my, uh, on my glasses that lets me see magical auras. I like to keep it up whenever I can. A warning would be courteous next time. I, I'll, I'll be sure to do that next time. I, I apologize. Put my glasses As on. would your departure. I think we've we'll concluded our business. As we're walking away, do I see magic around the paperweight? Uh, <laughs> let's see. I won't, it's I won't a use foot. An it's like got to be a focus. solid it's foot just... of wood to break, right? Mm -hmm. to, to... Yes. Okay. So there's not a solid foot it. of wood. In, uh, this desk is not nearly that thick. Um, three feet of wood. And you sense specifically. this. Excuse me. Sorry. It's three feet of wood specifically. Actually. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You sense this same very the same magic um, that you got from both the obelisk in the ship and the um, mm -hmm. little pendant that you have that was radiating from this. If I recall. That's what I have mm -hmm. written down, at least. Yes. Mm -hmm. cool. You also see illusion magic flying around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, 
Oh. Have a good sleep. And <laughs> da, 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 he completely da, da. ignores you as you guys <laughs> uh, as you guys leave. And you have been paid ten thousand gold then upon your um, upon your departure. So, okay. so nine thousand. Congratulations 000. to all of you. Um, as your yes. deal with the ship, um, that uh, a thousand of that goes split between all of the crew. So Wonderful. they will be very happy and all the more eager to um, work um, for you. So we forward. each get twelve hundred eighty-five. We could do two thousand into a party fund and then a thousand each. That'd work. We do have group expenses, so it would be nice to keep the party coffers. Full. I'll that, totally take that thousand awesome. gold. A thousand right. each. A thousand gold Jeez. for everyone. <laughs> That's exciting. That sounds like Snow White. Can I take 60 extra to. Nether begins to sort of shake uh, yes. as the. Well, bag. when, when we get the. Yeah, you'll just... get yours from the uh, the 800 when we get it back. Cool. Is it, do we have a this in coins or is it like letters of writ or. What? A good question. How? Um, yeah, I'm now over carrying capacity according to. Oh, no, wait. I have a bag of holding. Never mind. <laughs> I'm still unencumbered. Is this in platinum or in gold or. Yeah, what what form is it in? Um, it's in change that will make sense. Um, personally, I will just say um, there's nothing to ruin getting really wealthy like having to deal with encumbrance to carry it around. I will not. We will not worry <laughs> about that. As far as you're, if you're wanting to take every single item like Skyrim mode and every single <laughs> pot and platter and everything and stuff it we will have to talk about how much you guys can carry but I'm not going to check you on your um, monetary wealth but what if I bring along Lydia because then that's okay right <laughs> I can just put I everything on sworn, sworn to, to carry, carry your, your burdens, burdens. <laughs> I live for her isn't that what dragon's for <laughs> right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you have to pick between the dragon bones and the dragon scales because they be heavy. They um, are. More importantly, um, what can we buy? So oh, we'll see. when um, at at some point, I assume in short order, um, Dargan gets back with our gold. Indeed, um, awesome. he is in the process of doing that. But as you guys are leaving and now uh, walking amongst uh, the sort of um i guess just greater salt marsh area um Sarayan, you hear the or you all hear the sound um but particularly Sarayan of a small voice that says miss twyton <laughs> miss twyton and you turn around and you see the same boy from before um sitting there he's got a little like small naval coat um dressed almost like a um a neverwinter sailor would be but clearly in the kids version and he's got this sort of um mop of curly blonde hair um miss twyton and mr and he points to prion too and he kind of points up are are you are, are you pure of heart Yes. Will he? Yes. And his big toothy grin spreads across his face and you can see that he's still missing. Um, it looks like he's just lost a few of his teeth in, in this smile and he goes, my friend needs help from someone pure of heart. I would be honored to help your friend. Will he? Yes. Okay. Um insight. <laughs> this doesn't go ahead. make sense it's for like a, a child kid. to be coming and asking for someone pure a heart. Uh, oh, a 15 uh, uh, 21. Friend? Uh 21. He seems 21. completely earnest and very uh both um um just smitten with looking at Sarayan in general and just uh, very eager and excited that she has agreed to help his friend. Sarayan kind of bends a knee to get down on his level. <laughs> Where is your friend? Who is your friend? And who are you? 
she uh the the boy kind of looks up at you <laughs> debris you don't have to talk to them recoils we're here we're here that's rude <laughs> you're being rude that ain't pure of heart mm -mm. you were interrupting my conversation which is pretty rude we're here we're here uh, Priyon doesn't know what to think. Um. Oh, is it, his my friend is at the, at Quabba's Cove. His name is Caleb de Quab, and he's he needs help. Does, Does he, he a... live in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> is huh? he is he a crab? Caleb yeah, the crab. He's hurt, he... and he needs oh, someone no, to help. Oh no, he's hurt. Mm -hmm. Where is this place? Sarayan takes out her notebook. Can you give me directions? It's over in the cove, the Quabba's Cove, he mm -hmm. says, and points That's... kind of in the general direction. Those of you from Saltmarsh know it as um, some shacks along a cove to the north of Saltmarsh that are mostly abandoned um, for whatever reason. Does this and... child look like the sort of child that would be going in and among shacks on the cove? Mm, your turn for an insight check. I'm going to have Dahl help me with this. Hmm. So uh, that will give me um, emotional state of mind and then also um, their uh, alignment. If they're a... Um, if they are a celestial fiend or undead, it automatically fails. Oh, um... So okay, let's make a let's make so a roll with a Kraken dice a five year old. <laughs> Danger kraken, comes in many forms, Saran. Kraken <laughs> natural twenty on this, so you do not um, sense right. alignment or emotional state. Uh, Damn. But feel free to just roll. It's so if kid. that's what your um, familiar is doing, just roll a regular insight yeah. check. Then. Yeah, so thirteen. Look at his little sailor outfit. He's thirteen. Worse. It's cute. Um, he seems, again. Uh, he has this, um, you know, outfit on, but he's shirt's a little untucked. He's, it's more like his. He's dressed as a, I guess, a, the equivalent of Salt Marsh upper upper middle class. Um, so he's kind Bougie. of that kid who, unfortunately, like, well, the other ones just get to run around and go fishing and play with nets and play oh, pirate. He he has to leave the 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 house with what his mother dressed him in, and you know, on his way back, he's always like <gasps> panicking about taking off all right. of the mud and kind of you know. Does re Nether recognize the voice as being voice? a child that she's might have heard in in Saltmarsh before? Um. Roll a D1, roll a percentile die for that. All right. I have a question, Dan. Sure. So this child is hanging around the prime water manor, correct? Is like inside the manor, are we still there? You're oh, out, you're, walking you're out, away. you've left and you were kind of walking down the streets now. And this okay. was the same child you saw earlier who was kind of yeah. gawking at you guys when Melvin was casting his spell as well. Remember all the shiny colors? 21. 21. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it's, you don't know this person, but I mean, there's a group of kids about that age, a group of boys who, um, and well, actually a group of boys and girls who play around. They're, um, a bit young to be as, as cruel as some of the other kids were to you. They're just more interested in games and you have thought pretty much thought nothing of them. They're just, they're, okay. they're those, that, one group of kids, you know, that's all you know. But yeah, it's, well, it is a. I could definitely vouch for this Triton. She's pure of heart. She should be able to help your friend with whatever ails him. Yes, I've already agreed. Um, where, where can we find, can you take me to him? I know Crabber's Cove. You said it's take just down in the leader. water. Yeah, um, no, he's in the, the, the one, um, the yellow, the yellow cabin, the yellow cabin. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. the yellow cabin. Since, since we're all pure of heart here, should we all go and make sure <laughs> that she can help? Well, I don't know that all of us are pure of heart. 
I have other things I think I have might need to do. About Prion. I Prion's not the one I'm thinking about. She looks right at you, Anaris. <laughs> <laughs> do you oh, want Anaris. us to come along? I suppose is the question. <laughs> Sarayan. Would you like assistance from those of us who are not pure of heart? Uh, well, no. I think I can handle it. Okay, great. Okay. So I mean, drink. if his friend is just wounded, all right. I can handle a wounded child. Is your friend also a child, little boy? No, he's a crab. Right. Okay. How big a crab is he? This big. Okay. Are you gonna come with me so I know it's the right crab? Um, he kind of maybe not supposed to. He said it might, um, he didn't want me to see what oh. happens. Then how did you know he was hurt? Did you hear his voice? No, I things? saw him. He hurt his leg. It's broken. Okay. I play with him every day. But he's hurt today. But so you've already seen his broken leg. Yeah, but he says I can't be there when you help him. Okay. okay. Hmm. Please, uh, he's hurt. We have to. Well, hurry. I understand that. Yeah, Sarayan, he's hurt. And he kind yeah. of <laughs> reaches his little hand up towards you, Sarayan. Oh, what is that doing? As if, like, he's trying to hold your to hand. Grab your hand. To... Oh, <laughs> you, you, you don't think there's anything suspicious about this at all, Serene? No, evidently not. No. Do you? As, um, do you? As want they the... ask that, the little boy starts to sort of run with your hand out. Okay, um... bye. Do you want the butter? Do you want the butter in my bag to uh, help heal the crab? I don't think butter is going to help heal the crab. Sarayan is plop, 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 plop. <laughs> I look to the group and I'm saying, we're all going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to, no, let her go on her own. She made this decision. Yeah. I liked your joke, Nene. You, uh, you want me to buy you a drink at the tavern while we wait and see how this plays out? I mean, we could get it to go and just watch from afar. Done. I have, I have a fun to run, but, uh. Yeah, you sure? I'll, I'll see you all later. A crab that speaks to the boy. Aye, right, that sounds perfectly normal. Hmm? Come on. I mean, if you smoke enough, down. everything starts talking to you. Just saying. Aye, if an adult smokes enough, aye. This five-year-old is just a five-year-old. <laughs> no, Suddenly, no. he's like smoking things. That you don't know what his parents get up to. to. Maybe they're hotboxing in their mansion. <laughs> He exactly. looks like he's not a little he's not a little street urchin. No, he's not. He's, I know, Peter, not... that's what I'm telling them. <laughs> They're all like, vicious. he's evil. <laughs> I'm like, no, Just he's go. a friggin' kid. Just oh, go. I'm already gone, girl. <laughs> this gone, is your girl. thing. Do your thing. I'm following. Go be noble. And I suggest the, the, world. the group follow as well. I do swing by a bar and pick up a bottle. And follow a short I distance for behind. It. Thank you. Oh, how many? How many of you had this early in the morning? Um, so I'm only far? one shot in. All right. So. Okay. I had any? Yeah. So far. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> while while so, we're walking along, I would say, uh, uh, Melvin, how do I get my seagull friend back? You mentioned he's a familiar. Um, normally summoning a familiar is rich, ri a ritual. Um, it usually takes some, some incense and a little bit of fire. Oh, I need you to buy something. Like, throw the incense into the fire and do some, some magic. I, I never actually learned it myself, but, but my teacher had a familiar and I saw him do it occasionally. Well, I need to do that. And I'll carry on following Saran. Okay. So you make your way down um, through the streets of Salt Marsh, kind of along the way you went to get to the haunted house very early on when you all had just met one another. And you go 
sort of on the way to go to the jump off, which is further north of town, but instead of going up along the cliffs, you go down into this secluded cove. You begin to see shacks on the side of the water, some of them built up on the water on um, on stilts raised above the water level. Um, most of them are run down. You see empty poles standing where once bo boats were moored that have now been carried away. Um, some shacks are only half standing, but it's pretty much all abandoned here. But uh, as you continue on, the most um, noticeable feature is the fact that um, there are dozens of crabs everywhere. Hundreds, at least. Maybe even a thousand. Just kind of crawling all along, picking at little bits that wash up onto the shore. It becomes very evident the name why the name Crabber's Cove was given to this place. Um, those of you in Salt Marsh know it actually used to be a place where um, some uh, crab farming families used to live, but for whatever reason, um, issues with the tides, some local superstition and whatnot, um, Huge crabs this area of the town people. was abandoned. What's that? Huge crabs yeah. eating people, that sort of thing. They're not, they're not, he, he said this big, but I mean, that's like a large, regular crab, you know. Um, yeah, so but you said you there's up, dozens and then hundreds and then thousands there are of hundreds crabs. And they're so scurrying away. We never know how exaggerated along. this can get. And they and all surely... converge to make a mecha crab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking <laughs> notes. Okay, I'm going to write that one. I'm writing that one down. Oh. Um, converge to mega crab okay great uh the and indeed in the center there is one yellow shack with a door sort of swinging idly you can see a couple crabs uh going along the sides um picking at um little bits of nothing with their little pincers kind of constantly going ab about their mouth um doing their little sideways crab walks here and there Everything seems to scurry away from you as you approach. It doesn't feel really threatening in the least bit, um, though the yeah. sagging rooftops and the sullen aura of this area is a little just slightly off-putting, but like any any abandoned area would be. You know, um, Nene, there's this one time that I had a dream where um, there were hundreds of crabs and they all sort of started amassing together into one large crab, but it was still made up of hundreds of other crabs and they like moved together in tandem. It was really weird. That almost sounds like a party. If you had enough butter and lemon, that'd be a good dinner. Huh. Fair. That was not the direction that dream went, but. Um, yeah, my crab onto Mariah's shoulder and stumble for a second as Dahl flies into the open door to get a look. Okay. Um, as Dahl enters in the open door, um, you see a couple of the other um, crabs begin to shift. One kind of looks and kind of puts its pincers up in that direction and kind of actually tries to sort of crab walk up with its claws reaching for Dahl. Um, Dahl obviously has the ability to get out of the way, but you can tell, oh, these things um, can see her, oddly enough. These are not normal crabs. Make a- How do you know that? Go ahead and make a, <laughs> make a nature check there, Nether. I, I look over, I, I look over at you and my eyes are glowing a deep, deep green Wait, are you with me? We're, yeah, we're all there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it was just Prion. I no. thought you guys stayed at the bar. We we, we I joked. turned to the group and said, we're all going. Yeah. All right. Nature check, you say. Ooh, I've got a 19 on the die, so the 24. Ooh. 24. You know that... that um, um... <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not abnormal for a crab to be able to see something that is very difficult to see so that is oh. not an abnormal feature does that, um, does tremor crabs have blind sight was <laughs> well, the easiest no way shit. to communicate that so yeah oh, fascinating strike that they're normal crabs <laughs> <laughs> but where where is your friend oh the kid's not with He's, us right oh he, he kind of 
chies he away and then he my hand and to that yellow shack and says, I, um, I don't want him to be hurt any worse. He said it might get worse if I stay here, so I have to go. But please, please help Caleb, please. Uh, sure, yes. That was definitely the name you said before. I'm going to take it. Caleb, okay. yeah. Caleb the Crab. Sir, Caleb Does Dahl see crab. any large hurt crabs? Well, no, never mind. Um, have Dahl make a perception check. Or you Do can. I as well. To any of us. Okay. Well, are you, have you walked in Not the shack yet? I was about to walk in the shack. Oh, okay. okay. I just want to make so sure this is not a trap. Kind just of, real quick here. The little boy starts to run away, um, kind of back up to the coast, but you can see him kind of occasionally looking behind him like he's trying to find the place to um, stay and watch whatever's going to go on. But perception check inside the shack. Perception check. 16 on the die and the sprite's perception is this my perception or the sprite's perception depends if you're looking through its eyes it's yours its eyes. otherwise it's your sprites so it's a 16 total 16 total great um looking about in the center there is a it's a normal a slightly larger than normal sized crab and one of its forearms seems to have been or not the one of its four legs seems to have been broken off. It still has both claws, but it's just kind of sitting there, kind of rocking back and forth in the very center of this shack. As advertised, one wounded crab. Okay. Sarayan opens the door, if there is still a door attached to this derelict. As you do, <laughs> um, another crab kind of falls from the door, lands at your feet, and sort of... Oh. skitters oh, away hello. across you know, skitters over your feet across um and out of the way and you see the same thing um there are probably a dozen more crabs inside here um bustling about most of them now trying to um hide themselves over pieces of wrecked furniture a couple of them slink into cracks under the floorboards and disappear <laughs> just a bit but there is one sitting um right in the center and as you uh, walk in, you hear a voice that says, Hello. I'm Caleb. Thank you for coming to my rescue. Drink. <laughs> and that is where we will uh, take our break for tonight. Thanks for coming to dinner. <laughs> Those of you just joining, um, the crew has arrived back in the city of Salt Marsh and went and saw one gallon prime water the quest giver who paid them 10,000 gold pieces for retrieving the item that was lost on that derelict ship now they at the behest of a young child have gone to crabber's cove an abandoned little um assortment of shacks to the north of salt marsh to help his friend kawab de quab Upon arriving there, they found, indeed, why uh, why Crabber's Cove was given that name. Hundreds upon hundreds of crabs crawling everywhere. Approaching the yellow shack as directed, Sarayan opened the door and stepped inside and saw a crab that seemed to have one of its uh, forelegs sort of broken off and heard immediately heard a voice that said, Hello, my name is Caleb the Crab. And that is where we pick up. Did we all hear this voice? How far outside of the shack are you? Probably like maybe three or four feet behind Serene. In that case, yes. Um, I think Nene and I are about ten feet behind. Well, then I'd be with you. Oh, okay. okay. Anyone within a couple feet of um, within five feet, basically right behind Serene, would be able to hear it. Uh, Sarayan looks to Melvin. Did, did you, did you hear that? Uh, yeah, I did. Crabs don't normally talk. Not in my experience. Well, you probably have more experience with crabs than I do. I do have a considerable amount of experience with crabs. And this crab is kind of sitting here just using... It has that one foreleg broken off, but another one is kind of sitting there putting little bits of something 
in its mouth, just kind of sitting there with its eye stalks gyrating around and just stuffing little uh, pieces of something in its mouth. Um, so, so should I just, should I talk, should I talk to it? Him? Ask the crab what insurance it has before you administer care. I don't know what that means. Um, it's fine. Oh, oh, try, try you are pure it. of heart, aren't you, Triton? Yes. Wait. How are you talking to me? I'm a very special crab. It seems to be that you are unique, yes. Hmm. Well, let's just say that I've been cursed. Oh. And... I'm trapped here, and I need your help, Triton, to get out. Were you always a crab? As long as I can remember. And how do you know you're cursed? No, I'm, I'm, no, I wasn't always a crab. That was. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. No, I don't understand. How, how, how did you become a, a crab then? Uh, it's a long story involving, well, reckless decisions and bad investments and, well, uh, a hag. A hag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you pure of heart? Ruthless in life, you see. No. A shrewd okay, so businessman no. and oh an absolute libertine with the ladies and they said surely well they thought my heart was blackest of black locked me in this crustacean of a body and said they would well no one would ever help me but i'm just hoping that you would look upon me with a little bit of pity and help me out of this i it's not the worst, but, um, I, it's, uh, I, I don't know how to speak crab, so it's really lonely, except for that kid. <laughs> sure, I mean, you seem to be very patrician for a crab, so, uh, Good yes. word. Oh, <laughs> thank you, I'm very learned. I'm erudite, if you will. So, um, Aren't you ever. sweet goddess. <laughs> So, uh, okay, um, and Melvin has heard all of this, right? Yeah, as, as so they're, close. I'm standing right behind you. As now. they're yes. conversing, I'll definitely pull, um, Nether and, uh, uh, Debris in a little bit closer just so that we can kind of get an earshot of this conversation because otherwise it just sounds like she's talking into a room mm -hmm. and that's great, great. Well, she might be. <laughs> um, so, uh, Melvin, hold, uh, hold on. I, I, I'm going to, to talk to my, my friend for a second. Melvin, do you think that this is a good idea? I thought it was just a regular crab with a broken leg. I was just going to, I don't know, like put a, some seaweed around the, the wound and help it. I don't know what I was going to do. That is not very good crab first aid. I will <laughs> I, I figured you were just going to gonna heal him like you oh right 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 because i can do the thing with yeah thanks persona um well you well, can heal my... me to a much greater degree now you can heal me back to who i was does that involve butter my friend nene suggested butter um no okay that was a bad suggestion then i'm just gonna make a make a note no Seaweed, no butter. Okay, so what exactly are you looking for? And what are you asking of me exactly? I mean, what do I have to, what do I have to do? I, I want to understand what's going to happen. I need, well, it's a little more complicated than well, what we can do just now. But it needs to be under the light of the moon. Okay. That was when I was cursed. 
that was when my actions, um, well, earned me this place. Sure. So, it's quite simple, actually. I need you to, yes. when it's <laughs> under the light of the moon, to carry me from this place. Then where am I carrying you? Just out. Away. Can't you scuttle out under the light of the moon? No. Even I wish I could. How long has your leg been broken? Have you had a broken leg this whole time? Oh, uh, it's, it's, I actually did this myself. It, it's fine. It didn't hurt that bad. Uh, um, but just so the child would go to get help, really. Oh, okay. Uh, that was dishonest. Why didn't you just ask for help? You know, so our group, we function as a democracy. So I am going to go back to my group and we'll we'll have a confab and regroup as it were and then i um will be able to deliver a decision to you interesting what does your heart tell you triton well my heart tells me that if you did something bad enough to be cursed into this predicament in which you find yourself that maybe you weren't as pure of heart to begin with and i don't know it feels kind of strange to be helping someone who admittedly you know by your own testimony you were not pure of heart and so i don't know i that's a bit of a moral quandary for me don't we deserve a second chance a chance to atone Well, Persona would say yes. But let me talk to the group, because we don't make any decisions without talking to each other. Part of my code. Uh, um, By your leave, did, pure of heart. What did you say your name was? Uh, other than just Caleb? Oh, it's just Caleb. You never had a full name? Most people have more than one. It was Caleb the Crab in your life. I have four, in fact. <laughs> Let's just call me Caleb for now. Let the past be the past. Okay, Caleb. Okay. Caleb, I shall be till my original body was returned to me. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to the group. Is there a bard out there? <laughs> <laughs> there is a bard out there. Hi. Mariah! Mariah! You're always rhyming things. Occasionally, I, um, I'm struck by inspiration. Come meet Caleb. Hi. Hello. Is Nether and everyone else with you? They're, yeah, they're right here. Yeah. Oh, how many did you bring? Uh, well, the whole party of us is... Seven. Well, we're down one. But Talise wandered off somewhere. Yeah, Talise is around. We're all pure of heart. That's <laughs> not true. I'm uh, pure of heart. Definitely not pure of heart, but all of us together are far more powerful than just one alone. It's true. It's why we make all our decisions together. Hmm. Well, you're certainly a group. Uh, so you'll come back? Okay, um, so Caleb, I'm just going to give you the quick, the cliff's notes, as it were, because we're near a cliff, and that's when I took these notes. So, oh the cliff's God. notes. This version. is to the group, right? Mm -hmm. Like, okay. <laughs> Caleb was a man, and he was a somewhat lascivious and hedonistic man who was then turned into a crab by a hag um and now caleb wishes to be restored to his his previous form and what that requires is me being pure of heart grabbing him 
under the light of the moon of the moon i hope not a full moon or any particular moon just a regular old moon dm just a regular moon. just any old moon any old night when the moon is Um, risen in the evening it will work give us a moon so taking him out underneath the light of the moon um and he that's all that's all he says is required but i didn't want to commit to that because you know we we've decided that we're a democracy so i wanted to talk to everybody before i said yes and made a decision writ large for everyone else so what are our thoughts we could let you do what you want this time if you'll let us do what we want the next time okay that's a thought um who's next (laughs) oh i like her idea same three votes melvin (laughs) priya i thought it was kind of weird that he didn't want to share his last name there are many questions to ask makes me a little sus doesn't want us to know who he actually was and maybe he's super well known for being like an evil sorcerer or something I, i don't know I know. I mean, I have some misgivings. What do you think, Prion? I have plenty of misgivings here. But I don't like the idea of we let you do this and then others can do what they want. That's not fair. Yeah. Why? Well, I never accepted those terms. How is that unfair? What if um, you then what if you then ask me to kill someone in cold blood? I'm not going to ask you to do anything. So I never ask you to do that, Prion. No. That's that's a bit extreme. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. If it's any trust... good point, though. I trust the crab. I think we should turn him back. I think it's a great idea. Did we flip for Talise? What? <laughs> DM, do you want to flip a crack in D1? For... No, no, no. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I still have questions. <laughs> no, but no, just no, so we fine. count her vote, so her vote's counted. Mariah, Mariah, it's fine. Just let it play out. If um, this creature I, is sorry. not being honest, is then why Kraken would we help it? Yay or nay? Are you Kraken is always yes. Okay. Um DM, um so do out we of help curiosity. is the question. Um out of curiosity, is is there a local is is there any local knowledge about a local Caleb that might be gleaned from a history? <laughs> He's check? now a crap. Or you <laughs> or a hag. Yes. Peter, Go for it, Mel- yeah. Does okay. Melvin feel like the crab was being honest? Insight check the crab? Yes. Um is anyone if I may. out of curiosity also proficient in history that wants to help? Uh I might be. I can try. Okay. Have... Dumb. Are, did you guys leave or are you just talking help. about it? I'm no, we're, we're, we're no, down we would have walked outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Down, okay. down, down I'm right. proficient in history. Okay. I will do it in sight as well. I will roll at advantage for history. Yes. Oh, I rolled a kraken. Oh, my I team. also rolled a kraken. It's only so my third total, kraken uh, in, since I've had these new dice. Uh, 24 on history. 26 for on insight. Hags and Caleb's. We have a 22 on insight. <laughs> well, all right. For 26 and 22, between the two of you, you get that they are the crab. The crab. The crab is holding back. Um, something about his voice and he is doesn't want to say his um, at least his full name I guess um, though there's also along with that a desperation um, that is quite evident mm-hmm. how about this Serene hmm. oh the history check oh, oh yeah right. what'd you Sorry. roll please uh, uh, 24 I rolled a natural 20 Caleb's um, and hags. Any stories about hags have been more related to the Mirror of Dead Men and some of the things going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, in Salt Marsh itself, not um, or people being turned into fish or crabs or anything. Nothing that you've heard, especially not here. All right. No one historically notorious known as Caleb who suddenly disappeared from the history books? No, nope. All right. Ray, I got nothing. This is truly a democracy. But it is your decision whether or not to help him. But would you abide by our advice if you let us question him for a while? Yes, 
I think that that's perfectly reasonable. And I would expect then also in exchange for a favorable vote to bring him back that he would perhaps be willing to offer something in return. Would you be amenable to that? I think that a quid pro quo is always, well, not always, always is, I don't try, I try not to speak in absolutes, but a quid pro quo, they blah, 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 blah. Got it. <laughs> Triton, are you still there? At least definitely yes, holding yeah, back. Mm -hmm. We're well, here. I'm oh. going to step in. I'm... Um, some of my friends are going to come in and talk to you. Wonder what happens if we take him out not under the moon. Right, then Eris, you get the flashlight. I'm gonna get the crab. <laughs> like <laughs> we're going crabbing. <laughs> A little Caleb she holds crab. up fairy fire. I'm ready. Um, hello. Who, uh, who, who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Debris. Okay. I'm one of Sarayan's friends. Well, she is a true-hearted person, you're right about that. She hates seeing anyone in pain, not when she can help. But fortunately, she's got friends who are a little more perceptive. And they have told me that you're not being forthright. There's more going on here. And until we know all there is to know, I don't think we're going to vote in your favor. I'd like to make it a, a uh, intimidation check, if I may. Okay, go ahead. That's a plus seven. My crack and die rolls a nine, so a total of sixteen. Okay. The voice comes back up from the floor. The crab just sitting there. Still eating its little pile of bits that's sort of there. Uh. I... I, w I want to help you, really. I... I'm afraid to speak it aloud. Would you... Would you come closer so I can whisper it to you? I do have... information. Closer so you can whisper it to me. How about we do this, then? And Dahl will come down and hover above him. I think you can tell that there might be something nearby. Why don't you whisper it? that hmm that's more are you, are you looking and hearing through doll's senses yes okay please make a wisdom saving throw Ooh. is this so is this a uh, my wisdom saving throw yours my wisdom Debris. saving throw <laughs> hot dice, hot dice, hot dice. So I have rolled a 12. The wisdom saving throw is a plus 3. 15? Alright. No, that look on. Headphones me. off, everyone. I was going to say that <gasps> look on Peter's face. Ooh. <laughs> um, Nether. You, through Doll's eyes, look down, and under this crab, you see this slight motion. And two glowing... What? <laughs> I oh, can't yeah. And <laughs> two glowing amber eyes look up from beneath the floorboards. They're beautiful. Whoever possesses these eyes is gorgeous. And you feel compelled to do as they ask. Convince your friend. Come back at night. Help me get out of here, please. But 
don't tell them that I'm below here. She can help me, and I have no desire to hurt her. Or any of you. And I can tell you valuable information about Scare and Wave Chaser. Tell them that. It's my secret. <clears throat> Help rescue Caleb the Crab. And the eyes kind of retreat from down from the um, floorboards. You are charmed. Okay. Got it. All right. Um. All right. How fucked are we? <laughs> um, the other comes walking out and says, Well, I think you should help him, Saria. Okay, so that's another vote in favor. Um, so that was Anaris voting yay. Now Debris has voted yay. Mariah, did you vote yay? Um, I hadn't really voted so much as expressed concern for how suspicious this is. Well, it's definitely more than meets the eye. Promised less information on Scare and Wave Chaser. But what's his name? It wasn't. Ho it was holding back its Chaser. name. Caleb is all that I was able to get. But why, do we really uh, need any more than that? Hey, my name why is do you Debrie. need more info on um, Scarin? Don't you think it would be worth having? Information. I mean, power. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like... Enough to keep me, enough to get me interested. Oh, did he offer that information or did you ask? He offered it. Someone's going to have to catch me up later because I don't know who this is. Oh, Scare and Wave Chaser is, um, so uh, nice you might have not, you might have missed his name. It's, um, it's a uh, pretty boy's butler. Um, oh, so uh, I was like yeah, blacked so out for two weeks for some reason that I don't remember. So, um, you were there. You just forgot to take notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> That's why the journal pages from those two weeks. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. If if shit hits the fan, I'll help. Oh, that's really nice of you. But, Thank um... you. The, the end of the curse is will require us to take him out of the of the shack in the moonlight and for you to try to undo it somehow, either some sort of Holy power. Well, I am often strengthened by my connection with Persona. Yes, yeah, so all sorts of strength from the gods. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll support whatever you guys decide to do. I mean, it's a little suspicious, but if you want to go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so your can I... <laughs> so that's me an affirmative. Me Another affirmative from Melvin. Prion. It's a bit shellfishy, but I'll uh, I'll back you. Okay. Just want to confirm for 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 you, Saran. Yes. Is this something that you want to do, or is this something that you feel obligated to do? Or do well, you not discern between those two? Well, I mean. I definitely have the power of discernment and can make decisions if I... Um, no, I mean a choice. Like, I know some people who see their obligations as being the same thing as their own desires and other people who differentiate. I desire to do what Persona would do, and Persona would help those in need. What if he passes on the curse to you? And then you become a a little crab. He won't do that. <laughs> Sorry, I just imagined <laughs> Serene as a little crab. How, whatever, how do you? Whatever, whatever form he is now, at some point he was not a crab, and I can tell. A very trustworthy individual. He didn't make himself sound very trustworthy. 
Mm, but I guess that is okay. I would like to roll an insight check on Nether. <laughs> but that but was I, the first thing I've heard her say that didn't seem. If if, if if she's lying, then surely she would have to roll a deception anyway. But I guess him being upfront about no, his, I rolled his about failings and Shit. flaws. Yeah, that's that's an honest funny. thing to do. I only rolled a ton on the inside on other. I mean, I've met plenty of people who admit oh, their 19. own flaws just as a way to mask other flaws. They make you think that they're being open and honest by admitting something to you. And then they are really hiding other things underneath the surface. But like I said, if you want to do it, I'll support you and try to prevent you from dying because you know, you kind of do the same for me, so. This, I, I absolutely would do the same thing for you. Okay. This whole time I forgot to reveal my cute crab token. Oh, cute crab so token. Cute. Oh, it's cute. It needs to be a GIF. So, the one that's in chat. In this oh, it is so Peanut cute. Butter. Oh um, my god. It looks like he's dabbing. Uh, <laughs> like he's like, <laughs> eh. <laughs> The fact that you have it as a break my break makers. The crab dab. The crab dab. Crab dab. <laughs> that's too that's really close to crab dip and making me nervous. Oh, <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> um <laughs> Well if he's got a token, I say we do it. <laughs> so what's the decision, guys? Um there's a lot of outfitting and general things to do, and I know there's some some um sort of downtime studying and little bits you guys want to do. If you are going to help him out, you'll we can fast forward to evening. Yes, I say let us about. fast forward to the evening. Uh, there are other things that need to be done, but do Can we can we can we fill in the blanks of what we did during the day later? Yeah, yeah. Um you will have uh, some time between again between adventures to catch up with things and do things. So yeah. yes. If, we, if you would like to stay focused on this right now, we can sure. do that. <laughs> um, so, the evening comes, and again, the moonlight is cast over um, this same area of Crabber's Cove. Um, there are even more crabs here now during the night, seeming to be scavengers that go about during the dark times um, picking apart any of the dead fish that have washed up on the tide, uh, little bits of seaweed just really cleaning the beach constantly um, combing it over for any little organic bits, eating them and then um, scuttling into their little hidey holes yes um, as it's getting darker and they're coming out, I as just as an experiment, I pull out my violin and just play a little tune and see if they start dancing. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I'm just curious. As she Have does you ever as, seen I, a fiddler as she does crab? That, I, I speak to as many crabs as I can and try to convince them to dance. Very nice. Um, roll they a performance love the check. <laughs> Fiddler crabs, they'd be into it. Oh my god. <laughs> but truly, they're really adorable. Oh, they I have one bullshit. big claw um, and one tiny one. I used to have I used to have one of uh, one 13. It's not your It's not your best work. It's a yeah. little weird as you kind of get thrown off as a little crab scuttles over your foot. Ah. Um and they do start to dance and participate with your song a little bit and their claws some of them bang them click them together sort of like this others just clench really uh quickly um clamping down to create sort of a snapping sound along unfortunately instead of um snapping on two and four they're all snapping on one and two which is no. the failure of your performance check <laughs> one and three sorry so no. there's, uh. there's some there's some non-jiving crabs. They're very German crabs. I really love these anthropomorphized crabs. Uh, during the day, uh, DM, could I have got some incense and resummoned my familiar? Yes. Thank you. Night falls. Crabs dance. It is night, and you guys approach the same little shack again, and approaching, you see the same crab 
um, sitting there, again, eating from what's just like a little bit of collection of things that apparently are right there under its floorboards. And Is it or on its floorboard. What? Is it another crab? It sits a on the throat crab? of the carcass of another crab. Like, is crab? it eating another crab? <laughs> No, it is not. <laughs> He's like, nom, 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 nom. can we all stop Crabble a minute and quick save? Alpha crab. You um, cannot stop and quick save. No. Damn it. I am going to stand <laughs> off a ways um, and just have a position where I can see from afar what uh, Serene is going to do. Like, not be right on top of her. Okay. Nether will be close by to help if needed, but. She's letting Serene do her thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, Smiling, encouraging. Before Serene goes up, I will ritually cast Detect Magic just in case. Another, why are you so enthusiastic about this? But I've been able to talk to that many animals until recently. It's just. It's, they're mostly kind of. They're boring. Kind of nice to talk to one that actually has something interesting to say. But he's a dude. He's what? not an animal. He's a dudeable. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I just didn't see any reason not to help. I mean, I, I don't know that I would have helped him, but or that I even could. But Sarian wants to. She said that if we did saw a reason to to distrust him, that she'd abide by our advice. I saw no reason to distrust him. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. See. Saran, as you approach and enter the house again, um, yes. you see suddenly the crab kind of scoot to the side and then whoosh, disappear down between the floorboards. Caleb? I'm s I'm sorry. I I should have been more forthcoming. You have to carry me from the spot of my gravest sin. There's a cellar below here. That's what you need to carry me from. I am so sorry. I did not mean to deceive you, pure of heart. It'll be all right. Uh <clears throat> I've trained for this. Yeah, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. How the do I get it? Are, the floorboards are loose. Ah, oh, uh huh. Okay, Sarayan kneels down and begins prying the floorboards with her okay. webbed hands. With, and you are able to pull them up, and you see they've been kind of nailed in place as an afterthought and it reveals a stairway down into what seems to be a um, cellar that had been covered up previously. Okay. And I have dark vision, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just, <laughs> just head down. Is hey guys, right if I, going is down. Right if I, is it alright if I come with you? Uh, I, it's fine with me. Oh, uh, wait. Let me, just let me, he seems very private Mother, how about, we, about how about... his condition. Hmm? Uh, Caleb? Yes? Hey, is it okay if Nether joins me? Sure, if I'll carry that you. Would make you. If that would make you more comfortable, but I have to be the You have to be the one to carry me, though. Oh, that's no problem. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, Nether. She gestures to Nether to... If not... If Debris. If Debris is going, I'm going as well. Oh, that's all right. I've got it. No. Nope. Yeah. Well, no, I think it's okay. I think we I think we've got it. I'm still coming. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to go by myself. <laughs> I don't want him to become overwhelmed. <laughs> so, she starts to plop 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 down the stairs. Okay. You clunk 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 down the stairs <laughs> and you see a sort of rather well excavated, maybe just partially collapsed cellar. It's going um, to be fine, Mariah. All and so shoot all right. me if I'm conf if I occasionally show concern for you. Down oh, within it, you that. see what I'm looks to be a very rudimentary sort of living quarters that has been assembled here. And um, the um, as you descend, you see 
it's it's almost like someone has been sleeping here. There's a tablecloth set over some um, over an overturned barrel. There are um, barrels set against the wall, and a small bed set down here as well. And then sitting in the corner, sort of crouched on a stool with a hood over their head is a humanoid figure with two ha- and two hands holding a crab and feeding tiny little bits of food that the crab just eagerly grabs over and over again. There is, the hands are bony, emaciated, like this person has been starving down here. I am, I am Caleb Triton. I mean, please. that makes a lot more sense than a talking crap. Will you help me? Why do you lie? Because I'm ashamed. What'd you do down here? I waited and regretted. And, well, prayed, I guess. I'm ready to try again. Okay, but see, I had signed up for taking a crab man onto the beach in the moonlight and turning him back into a human man. But you're already a human man, so I guess I'm just confused what I'm doing here. Consider this place my shell. (laughs) Boo, Caleb. I don't know. (laughs) I'm trapped. I cannot leave here. No one comes here. I've heard things that can help you. I've heard things you need to know. Please, will you carry me from here? Has to be lifted in your sweet, thick arms. (laughs) Oh, yeah! (laughs) This just goes right over. Scoops him up like a baby and takes him out. He, like, fireman carries him. Are you actually going to carry him out? (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) Okay. So you approach, and he kind of pulls the hood down further along uh, uh, over his head and um, sort of sets (laughs) the crab aside as you pick him up, and then he tucks his bony little hands inside the sleeves of his cloak. You pick him up, he's light, and he kind of you can't really see his head, but he kind of nestles up into your shoulder. Oh, wow, that's familiar. And is light to carry. <laughs> and as you um, carry him up, 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 out of the cellar, and there they're standing here at the top of the steps, just nodding. Just you hear a sigh of relief, and then you hear a as you think what seems to be a thin humanoid nose just brushes itself along the length of your neck. Oh, I don't like that. (laughs) Boo, Caleb. (laughs) Thank you, pure of heart. Is he gonna bite my neck? Is it Shrod? (laughs) Shit! In a a strangely spry manner, this hooded figure sort of jumps out of your grasp and then pulls back his hood and you see glowing bright amber eyes on a handsome young young face curly black hair cascades down to his shoulders and his clothes were once fine but long long ago are now threadbare the ornamentations are still um, visible though and he smiles at all of you. See, I Thank told you. you it would be all right. Uh, yeah, I... I am sorry for the deception, but, well, I didn't want you to cast too much judgment before hearing what I have to offer. Okay, your name is not Caleb the Crab. Who are you? I am Jolek. 
Okay. Uh, DM, can I have a spelling, spelling for that? X O L E C. Uh, not what I wrote at all. <laughs> gonna write the ipa for that one in. <laughs> it's talk. an old name i will accept your apologies if it's hard to pronounce at first our okay he kind of walks around the cabin pacing around a bit looking out the windows and then finally going to a window that looks outside of salt marsh or looks out to salt marsh that city is more rotten than you know. I mean, uh, it seemed pretty, uh, pretty rotten, but maybe. I, uh, I feel like you're not talking that in a literal sense. Well, quite literally, in some places, it is very rotten. Well, At least how I remember. It was just a little hamlet when I came. Those towers, those walls. Yeah, Is there still it's... singing that comes from those rocks at night? Or has that stopped? I've heard singing in the rocks. Have you? And he kind of comes up to you, Nether, and puts a hand on your cheek. Uh and leans forward and kisses you on the forehead. Thank you, Debris. You're very welcome. Jolek. I believe so we handsome. had a... I believe we had a bargain. I intend to uphold my end. Oh, it's all right. You don't have to do anything like that. No, yes, you no. do. We had a bargain. That's... We we said quid pro quo. What are you all staring at, by the way? I know I'm a bit gaunt, but we'll be able to fix that soon enough. DM, would a history check on that name be appropriate? Yes. Um, I'll say I, outright oh is God. a very difficult one. Mm -hmm. What are you? You look... Drow, but... I have a 24 on that. Toe ties. Oh, much better than mine. Phew. Get you look drow. Oh. That's you your comment. Drow. It's the same skin color, no? Um, so, Melvin, Jolek is a, um, uh, what? All that you will get at this point is that Jolek is a name that is very long out of fashion. Um, very, very long. Um, it is also um, originates um, closer to the, the the borders of Am down in the south. And it was uh, indeed. You might a, be familiar with a certain uh, logo, <laughs> you know. A noble, and it is a name that was associated with a nobility, but it is very obscure. You have not seen that name outside of a tome, you know, for ever. So. DM. Mm -hmm. Could I use divine sense on this Jolek character? Sure, absolutely. Okay. As a reminder, Melvin has to detect magic up at the moment. Okay, you just sent, you sense no magic. Um, okay, thank you. The uh, Sarayan, you um, extend the senses gifted to you by Persona and do feel a powerful presence of undead standing in front of you. <laughs> oh. Oh. What's the matter, Sarayan? Um... <clears throat> she gestures I'm, for Priya to I'm just become Caleb. <laughs> close to come heart. closer. Please, it's okay. Please make a wisdom saving throw, Saran. Oh, yikes. I'll use my Kraken dice. Ah! That was all my dice She's going all out. Her dice. Oh, 18 <laughs> Kraken <laughs> dice. Uh, I rolled 18 Krakens. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. Uh, 12... 
works. Let me make sure I don't have a modifier. Does this look of, like he's visibly doing something? Because obviously we've seen Nether. No, he just looks at her and says that and smiles. 12 plus 4 is 16. Okay. Um... We don't probably need to do headphones off anymore, but Saray, and he looks at you and he smiles and he says, there's no need to fear me. Everything's fine. And you believe him. You are charmed. Right? <laughs> He's, oh my goodness. I haven't felt this way since I saw um, Anders. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> He's so handsome. <laughs> I place my hand on him. He smiles and tucks a lock of hair behind his ear as he says that. (laughs) Well, my face is thinned out a bit. No, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's amazing. No, you have incredible cheekbones. Can I touch them? Are you okay, Serene? Serene, you were about to say something. to extend a webby hand. (laughs) (laughs) You were about to say something to me, Serene, and I place my hand on her shoulder and cast protection (laughs) versus evil. (laughs) Okay. He watches you do this as you go over and cast a spell and kind of raises an eyebrow. Does he let me touch his face? (laughs) He does. He kind of um, caresses your hand and smells kind of your wrist. Oh, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) So So soft. This is so triggering. Have you been here a really long time, Jolek? Ages. What all have you learned? You probably have lots to teach us. True. Well, as I mentioned, I've been hearing some things, and I think you should be rewarded. There are some... (laughs) Amazing. There are some... (laughs) There are some very bad people in Saltmarsh. And I can lead you all the way up the chain. I tell you what, meet me outside of Soulmore Manor in an hour, and I'll show you the first link of this chain. Um, I, I don't know, I, I feel like, um, <laughs> as... Serene described to you earlier, it's common practice in this group for us to gather as much information as possible and then make a decision as a group. And I don't feel like we have enough information to go on here, especially after your deception of Serene. I like your friends, Bard, but you are starting to get a little boring. Uh, Mr. Zolek, just one quick question. How do you feel about prime water? Just, just curious. Oh. Mm. Why? What do you think about him? She asked first. (laughs) I think I... It's okay. Isn't it? My drow friend. Or half drow, if I'm seeing right. I have enough thoughts of him to ask you what you think of him. Hmm. I could do... I could tell you what I, I think of him. Um, uh, jo- Jolek? I... I made you... I made... I made you something. <laughs> <laughs> Nether looks over at that. It's like, oh. <laughs> you don't do yourself justice. Your neck is much prettier than that. <laughs> you never answered my question, <laughs> Mr. Saran. <laughs> I'll be going by Mrs. Serene Jolik from now on. I've heard he's quite a peacock, and I could do without all those feathers. Maybe we should hear the man out. He sounds intelligent. You too? 
God is above. All of you have completely fucking lost it. I've heard they're delicious, though. Well. Mm. Right. An hour outside of Solmars. The first what? link. What are we doing I'm, I'm gonna... at Solmars? Showing up. No. Once we get there, what's the plan? <laughs> You'll see. And suddenly his form becomes sort of translucent as he completely dissolves into a fog. The other is there pulling on her hair and she looks at Mariah wild eyed cascades out the window and seems to be lost in the breeze. Serena starts tapping Nether. Did you see that? I'm having a very really hard time trying to figure out exactly how I feel. Mariah. I know how I feel. Are we going to actually meet him there in an hour? Yes. <laughs> so Ryan's already like plodding along the beach. Uh, no, 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 no. I, gra on, I grab her by on. the end of her armor and I'm not really that strong. So I'm like, I have to like grab onto a door frame too to keep it. <gasps> Anaris will help. <laughs> Anaris will grab another arm and hold her back. Nether just keeps on going. Oh my God, oh, Nether, no, no. She gets to go, I wanna go. Nope, nope. <laughs> Don't Nobody... try to stop me. I, no, stop. Why? Yeah, Where's why? your little fly friend? Hey, asshole who, like, was a real bitch to me the last time we were in a ship. Where are you? What, what little you fly friend? You suddenly hear, you feel a kick in your nose, almost <laughs> enough to make your eyes start watering. Fuck. <laughs> He's around. Yeah, does he share your fascination with this fellow? Hmm? I know you have a voice. Speak for yourself. I go where she goes. I do what she bids me. But you care about her well-being, don't you? More than anything. Yeah. So, what's with all this sudden behavior change, huh? That doesn't seem very characteristic. Mortals are very confusing to me. I find it best to just go with the flow. See what happens. No, well, you didn't do that the last time. Well... There was a compelling reason. Oh, okay, so this He's is speaking, compelling speaking reason to you in the... Elvish. All right. Which I guess a lot of people can hear. I speak Elvish. So we know what he was, right? God. He was amazing. And then yeah. it turns around and he starts walking again. He was so <laughs> great. Collar, collar. Saran also starts. Oh Stop it. Nether casts invisibility on herself. No! <laughs> Where'd she go? I she light her in fairy sick? fire. I shoot fairy <laughs> fire and light her in fairy fire. Oh. No, you don't. No, ma'am. This so is bothered. getting weird. A little bit. What? Serene, so, you were going to tell me what this thing was, and all of a sudden, you're like... Uh, uh. Yeah! Yeah, that's exactly what it was like. What was it, was... Sir Ian? DM, can I remember? <laughs> it was it was like a minute ago, so... Yeah, well, yes. okay, so... Okay, my question is, I was just wondering if it was like the gayest charm. <laughs> it's like, I can't... <laughs> no, you are charmed, okay. so I will say this. Um, yeah. You are not under control, but... Um, it takes whatever it said of you, you take the request in the most favorable way possible. And he had asked me not to worry about it. Yes, he has said, it's fine. You don't need to worry about this. Oh, yeah, he was going to tell me. Well, oh, well you no, don't... he wasn't going to tell me anything. I was going to tell you something. But, you know, I don't think it's important. No, it is important. Well, there's only one way. To decide if I should tell you, we vote. Should I tell Prion? Yes. 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 You should do what your heart tells you is right, Marion. <gasps> You're so right. I should go Nearest to Nearest, back me up here. Come on. <laughs> yes, you should tell us. Four votes oh, to two. two. Tell us. Fine. Fine. Oh, okay. He is undead. What oh, the wow. fuck? Oh, wow. An undead, Serene. Well done. Thank you. You must Thank be really, you. really proud, pure of I'm heart. I'm very proud, and we're very happy. We're gonna die, aren't we? People! Um, what sort of undead, undead was it? Usually, 
usually evil? No, oh. he called me pure of heart. So he knows how to recognize pure of heartedness, and that means that he has it in himself. DM, I would, would, Anaris really would not. know. I'm waiting until he's doing something. DM. What? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> what are you doing? Put it down. Put it down. <laughs> put that monster manual down. Put him down. He's playing with the dice. <laughs> you put him down. I'm making a dice stack. <laughs> That's Sorry. what I was doing on that day. <laughs> I'm fidgeting. Gosh, I got in it. trouble because it <laughs> fell. And Jade was like, all of your dice, I can hear you stacking your dice. And I was like, I'm playing. I think I also Manera's hear my like... wife laughing at me because I yelled, I'm fidgeting. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. So being well, we, a, yes, a cleric of the Raven Queen and knowing undead and all that, she knows what Zolek is, correct? That requires a knowledge check. A uh, religion check. Um, religion check. Ah, I am... Proficient in that, I think. Oh yeah, that's a dirty twenty. Oh yeah. Um, based on his the look, the charm, and the able to just the the ability to bypass any sense of your companions and totally enthrall them is textbook vampire. I knew it was strong. What is it, Anaris? So, you want to know what he really is? Duh. Vampire. Fuck. <gasps> is you guys that why he the... liked my neck? And you can, you can hear footsteps of some invisible um, something stepping towards the town as Nether is still no longer in view, but um, <laughs> she, is, apparently... Is she wrapped in fairy fire? I'm... Did I get her? You know... I guess if we're doing that, yes. Nether, please make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, because if I can catch her. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, dexterity saving throw. Rain mm -hmm. has to make a a change to her her drawing. <laughs> oh, my oh my god! god. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that's it. I quit. <laughs> oh, that's a five. So you see Nether. She's it's purple. Sparkly flames. Sparkly Leon, get her. <laughs> Twinkle toes. <laughs> Grapple her. Yeah, she. Uh, he's a vampire. Oh, she attacks me. Go get her. Ser seriously, somebody should go get her. He's God. he's gonna like eat her or something. She's Nether. going to him. Sarayan runs down the beach and tackles Nether. <laughs> there we go. That works. We follow. Um, <laughs> with protection versus evil, does she get another save, DM? No. Oh, she doesn't. Oh wow. Um, DM, can I make a knowledge roll to determine what Melvin knows about vampires? Uh, that would be a religion check. Um, okay. Though, with Chelsea could probably, or, excuse me, sorry. In, <laughs> it's like we just hung out or something, so I'm thinking of you all <laughs> as people and not characters. Uh, We're not people. Would, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, Inaris would know quite a bit, so you can go ahead and roll your religion, but we'll see where you guys come at together. Uh, with this 18. 18. Okay, 18 and 20. Uh, powerful, very powerful undead who are able to um, charm other creatures into their control. Uh, patient, cunning, and difficult to destroy, particularly the, um, their, regenerator their regenerative properties are enormous in that they can, even when they are killed, oftentimes can regenerate in their spot of rest. Ryan, what are you doing? You can't go to him because I'm going to marry him. And she starts crawling. I don't know if this going to work. Um, I, as, as we get closer, um, I'm going to yell out, um, I, I don't know. I have no idea how this, if this is going to work. Um, I, <laughs> Debrie, I I really suggest that you stop and truly think about what this vampire might be doing here and stop being charmed by him. <laughs> and I cast a chest. I was like compelling argument. <laughs> I know. Extremely. Um casting so, suggestion. Yes. Hmm. 
Okay. How does that work? I don't know. <laughs> like I said, uh, I've never had seen yes. that interaction before. What is so. it? We're what gonna is find it out. You, what is I it want her. Suggest? I suggested that she stop being charmed. <laughs> I don't know. No, actually, what I said was like stop and truly think about what he's asking of you. And stop being charmed. <laughs> what? Stop what? Ask uh, asking of you? Uh, stop. stop and really think about what's being asked of you by a vampire. Okay. Um, I don't know. All right, I guess Debris roll a wisdom save. Okay. I failed with a seven. Um. So. Uh. While you still, we'll we'll say, how long does this last? Eight hours. Yeah. Um, for the moment, you think that maybe I'm just a little caught up in this. He's the best. He's great. He's probably going to be my best friend later, but I'll go along with this for now and just chill out a little. All right. All right. As long as you don't, as long as you don't do anything to go against what he wants. Who, me? I, Look, I don't have to. We don't, I, I just... I'm just walking back to town. I'm not. Right. I'm not like. I'm not gonna no, can, can, just can jump we... into his arms or anything. Why would no, we want to go I'm against a vampire? <laughs> well, Nothing what ever. Is that? That's just a word. It's it... undead. It's evil. Age is just a number. Vampire is just a word. <laughs> Until he drinks all your blood. Ah. It's my goddess's favorite enemy. What did you do to me, Mariah? I feel all confused. Yeah, I'm trying to get you to listen to me. All right, well, I'm listening. He's dangerous. And so you we? went from... No, no, no. Okay, You went from angsty normal self to drooling over a man that you met less than an hour ago. She did skip adolescence. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's her first crush. We all remember what puppy okay. love is like. Yeah. Okay. But do you think you there's something a... wrong with me? Vampires have been known to charm people. I don't feel charmed. Till really? whatever it is you did to me. Sarayan's definitely not charmed. Oh no. She oh, loves vampires. Just, she just loves undead. Love. Evil creatures. Mm -hmm. I Setting them free. He didn't ask me to do anything bad. No, but it's been done anyway. Um, Serene, what's Persona's view on vampires and undead? Well, Persona didn't deal so much with vampires and the undead, so we can really only kind of guess at what he would have thought. Uh, we don't like the Sahuigan. So, yeah, vampires undead. I don't know. <laughs> Keep going, <laughs> trekking up towards town. No, she doesn't. <laughs> I'll get my nets out and throw my nets at her. <laughs> when I like, all right. That's just. Do all... I get caught? <laughs> just, just calm down. Are you? Are you threatening to hold us somewhere against our will? Because that's another. What? As friends to stop you from going to get your blood sucked, blood sucked out. No, we'd Why never do that. Why you just come with us? Because we don't want our blood sucked out. Look, if he's going to show up outside the Solmar place in, mm, I don't know, in my imaginary watch here, 53 minutes after all of the back and forth that we've been going on here, um, then some shit's going to go down. And I would love to know that two people that I regularly put my life into their hands by traveling with and getting into danger, I would like to know that they've got my back instead of s drooling all over this new guy. Well, didn't you hear what he said? He said that there was rottenness in town and that he would show us where it began. And we're just gonna trust him because he says, trust me. Since when has that been your way of acting. Yeah, there's no reasoning with them. It's They're charmed. It's been a very strange week. Come on, Melvin, you're a wizard. How do we stop this? 
So, sorry, I was so distracted by his good looks. Um, but you mentioned that he's going to the Solmore estate? Yes, we're meeting him there in 51 minutes. And that's where Andrews is. Oh, but I'd also no. like and but Andrews love triangle. Oh, Guess no, you're gonna she... have to pick. Um, um... Oh. <laughs> He's clearly oh. very distressed. The GM, do I do I know how to end a charmed effect on a creature or how long a vampire's charm lasts or anything like that? Um with that eighteen um, on my check. So, again, one of the w w what you will know with the religion check and being a um, educated mage is that oddly enough that this is not something that can be um, dispelled by normal by rem removing normal magics. It right. takes higher restorative magics to typically end an effect like this. Was the goddamn cleric when you need her? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> Leon, I, I don't think I can remove this from them. Um, it's not just a regular like spell effect. Um, vampires have some innate abilities that are different and require different magics to remove. Look, I'm not a fool. She's very compelling, but I have no illusions. He's not going to want anything to do with me. Yeah, we, because he loves me. And there's we, nothing we, we can do to stop him from whatever it is he's going to do. Well, we don't want him to kill Solmorn, right? I wouldn't Just think so. Prime water. But if is, he's got is he going to Prime Water or Solmorn? Solmorn. For Solmorn. And apparently he offered information about Scarin Wave Chaser, who also it's... resides at the same place. Which I kind of like him. He's okay. He's a dodgy fucker as well. That he has. I feel like we should go try to stop him or warn somebody or something. We should go meet him? Yes. No, no, I mean we should go talk to Anders Solmorn and try to stop the vampire from doing whatever it is he wants to do. Well, he's already taken out two of our party. Hmm? Well, if it say. gets out that we were the ones who released the vampire, I don't think the council is going to take very kindly to that if feeling that one of their members is killed. Anders Solmorn or Scarin Wave Chaser would probably be a good way to guarantee that. So are we going to the manor? Sure, go run off to the manor and wait for your new master. Should we get more drinks and watch what happens? No, I'm actually concerned this time. Um, I want to. All right, so I'm kind of just, I watch Saran off in the distance. I don't know what Nether's doing. I'm staying um, with you. Um, hmm. Creon, would you mind running an errand with me? I have a thought. Sure. Okay. Um, Nether and um, Melvin and Daenerys, maybe we can meet you there? Sweet. I'll, I'll go make sure the Serene doesn't do anything too rash. Aye. Just Thanks. make sure, just check on and make sure she doesn't set a lich free or maybe <laughs> summon an evil dragon to burn down the city. You don't yeah, want maybe. me to come with you, Mariah? I feel somewhat compelled to listen to your suggestions oh well, i merely said to truly think about the situation that doesn't mean well, that you have I to am. follow my every whim well, what do you want in this particular moment um i think it might be best that you don't know what i do here all right should i just stay here then how about you join Serene? Okay. I think for your safety. Best go off. 
Hurry up, please. I'm glad okay. that you met Dahl. Oh, yes. Can we see him? Well, maybe later. Okay. Um. Okay, once they're, like, out of earshot. Oh, no. Why should no was bloody? Wait. Melvin, hold on. Oh, oh, okay. You have detect magic up, right? Yeah. You see anything flying around us? Do I see anything flying around us? No. No, I, was I don't. wondering if Dahl was still in the area. <laughs> so I guess that's an answer for Sean. Sounds like Dahl is going with uh, Dahl's gone? Serain okay. and Nether. Great. We could, we could probably see Dahl anyway as fairy fire. Mm, right. Um, okay. Oh, the, so the, by now that would have dropped. Yeah. yeah. True. Um, if if it's a problem potentially to alert the Soulmorn estate, then maybe we tell someone else that we like. Um, and my nominee in this case would be um, Etta Oland. The dwarf lady. The dwarf lady. Oh no no. No. Um, that is, um, she's a member of the council, um, who, I think you weren't here for this, um, her, a relation of hers we saved, um, from ah, yes. the boat. Oh, okay. She's, an yeah, old, she's the older there. woman. Yeah. yeah. That was right before we met you. She seems to have, be pretty even keeled, um, and at least is familiar with us on a more, you know, pleasant manner than some of the other councilmen. Okay. Like, I wouldn't be coughing on knocking on going prime water. Um, and also, um, we might want the cleric from the temple. Oh, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Those are the two people that I would want to alert to the situation if we can't talk to the Solmores directly. We're going to have to be quick. Yep. Do you want to go get the cleric? I'll deal with Oland. Sure. Okay. We split the party many ways, Peter. <laughs> All right. It sounds like <laughs> it. You're going to yeah. get us kicked out of this town. Um, so I hear some are going to the Solmore estate to hang out. Some are going to speak to Edda Oland. Was there a third? Or was it just the... Uh, the cleric. Right. Interesting. Well, um, so as, um, uh, as you are splitting up and going, um, encountering Welgar Brinehand, who is, um, has to be woken from his chambers, some of you are warmly received by um, the Oland um, uh, the Oland house staff but confused they are confused by why you are calling at such a late time and um, Nether and Sarayan you are um, also there's nothing happening outside the Solmore estate there are the normal guards going around but that's about it all of you can hear then as you are going to your separate places. Maybe about in 20 minutes before you, before you were told to be at the Solmore Estate. A blood-curdling scream which echoes out from an alley around the corner of the Solmore Estate. And you see um, a young woman running away down the street as a heavily armored guard. Not of the town guard, but of these sort of personal Solmore um, guards staggering out from behind the street. He has a smile on his face, but blood is dripping from the corner of his mouth as he holds his neck and blood is oozing out between his fingers as well. He looks barely able to hold himself up, but he's smiling. And he says, Never put your orders in writing, fool. Never put your orders in writing, fool. Never put your orders in writing, fool. Never put... Oh, that was the last words. Black Network, never put your orders... And then as you see that, he kind of leans against the wall. It looks like the last bit of blood is going to leave him. And suddenly, um, 
uh, he relaxes a bit and a chunk of chimney from above comes crashing down, hitting the side of his head, splattering the form of his body against the wall as he falls slow and limp. Those last words echo in your mind um, and you hear Think number one. At that time, you see the form of Scare and Wave Chaser emerging from the compound, looking around, eyes sharper, more attent, his body cat like in his movements. He is erupted from inside and he is looking with a um with with a intensity that you have not seen as his eyes before as he is looking around the empty night and his eyes fall upon you, Nether, and you, Saraian. It's about well. that time that Welgar opens up and asks particularly what it is that's wrong. It seems there's a disturbance in the city. Um, we should go. And at that time that clad in a beautiful um, gown, and um, sort of night covering that she's wrapped around herself that Edda Oland leaves the house to meet the rest of you. As these three things happen simultaneously, we will break and pick up these threads in about two weeks. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my God. 